guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. I've got one that's got quite a few requests. Um, we're going to learn how to do I Want It All by Queen. So this one, a lot of overdubs, as a lot of Queen's music has. Uh, so there's, you know, even in the beginning there, by the way, there's multiple versions of this. Um, like the remastered version starts with just kind of a cappella singing um and i guess the original version uh, of what i'm looking at on spotify at least is starts with a actual kind of more aggressive um rock intro so i'm going to be doing that version um kind of i guess the original version all right so and you'll also see the official version it might omit a couple of riffs and stuff so hopefully i'll be able to get them all um what you originally heard of the full track uh when it was originally recorded and all the solos, and, and so we got a lot cut out for us today. So we're gonna jump into that. Uh, before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. That's uh, real important, and like, you know, like and comment the videos, it really helps me out a lot. Um, and something that you can really support uh, the work I do here on YouTube is by joining my Guitar Academy. Uh, you'll see a link in the description below. That link will give you a free seven day trial to my Academy. And on, on top of that, you get access to all of my guitar courses. So it's, besides just supporting all the work I do here on YouTube, uploading tons of song lessons, the Academy containing all my guitar courses, you get full access to all my courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone, uh, many different styles. Uh, so free trial there, so just please go check it out. All right, so let's jump into this. I'm in standard tuning. And like I said, this intro here, um, originally it was just kind of on a... Kind of that kind of thing and then there's a little intro solo here four solos in this so we got <laughs> a lot of stuff to get through so now this beginning here um, i'm going to go to a clean sound here so you can kind of hear more of what i'm doing um now this is the product this is not necessarily how he plays it live by the way this is more of a product of what i'm how i'm playing it is all the guitar parts so there's a distorted guitar there's acoustic guitar everything kind of layered onto one another for the uh that recording um, and then live, he'll kind of simplify the, it a little bit. But we have basically this, if you combine the parts. So now, like I said, not live, I'm sorry, just on the recording. Live, he'll just do this. I'm sorry, not the major. But it's like... um, so what are we doing here? We're basically going to start here with this. It's a B minor chord. So a bar across the second fret. So it's a B minor, but you're actually gonna have F sharp in the bass. So we're gonna start with a full bar. So you include that note on the second fret of the low E string too, that F sharp. So it's like get the fifth in the bass. And then a regular B minor from there. We have the fourth fret on the D, fourth fret on the G, third fret on the B. So that's when you first hear it. And then it transitions to this. So basically, you hear that and and then on here, and the only note that stays the same is this F sharp stays there. So you have this. So that's combining all the parts. Like I said, live, he's just kind of just usually. To give it, you can just basically do it like that. You'll see a lot of people, and he does this in the verse, which is basically just playing the B minor and then just lifting up a million of B sus two by lifting up the note on the B string and then back there. But on the recording here, you can hear that. So we have that change. I'm going there to this chord. I have the open E, open A, fourth fret on the D, second fret on the G and the B. And that's a transition chord, so it's, you don't hear it very loud. But all those notes are there if you listen close to the recording. But, uh, so, what do you like that, or you just want to want to do that? It's fine, but it's not like the album. And then, just in the beginning of the song, you hear this little fill. So that's hammering on zero to two on the A string, pull off two to zero on the D. Then we go to a G power chord. 
So that's just, you know, regular G power chord. And then to a, to a D power chord, open D power chord, back to that G. So we have this. And then we're going to go to the next chord by slightly bending the third fret on the low E into an, um, an A major chord. And then he does that bend again, but he also makes it an A sus4 when he does it. So you can just do like this, like that. So you just get the A major chord and add the third fret on the B and then go back down to A major. Or you can try to put, the, along with that, there's a... So when you do that third fret on the B, there's another bend at the third fret on the low E string there on the recording. It's obviously an overdub, but so you can choose to do one of them like this, or, or do them both together, which you just play that A, and then you can play that third fret on the B, and then you play it on the low E. So, so I've been kind of doing it like, like that. Playing the two notes and then bending that one on the low E string while I do it. And then back. So if I was gonna choose to just do one, I'd probably to me that sounds more like the song. So we have this so far. And then we're back to that B minor chord with the F sharp in the bass. So full bar, you're gonna play that second part on the low E string to the A. So that's the progression that you can play a lot during the chorus. That's what I'm playing during the chorus. So it's... By the way, that little, that little fill doesn't really happen later on in the song. So you just play the chorus. I want it. All right, and then if we're counting the original recording, then we have, somebody's probably gonna come, well, they did a demo in 1970, whatever. Uh, this is the one I can find on Spotify. That's not the remastered version where they completely admit it, admit it, they just go straight acapella. We have this little, that kind of, so that's just talking about playing the B power chord, G power chord. A power chord and then back to the B and then they do like kind of a it's really kind of a bar dive or whatever uh, but I just kind of slide just kind of recreate it and then back to the, the G and then the A and then it goes to the intro solo so now we got to something um, that sounds like this All right, so that's gonna start with um, a bend at the 10th fret. Oh, here's the first phrase. So that's gonna start with a bend at the 10th fret on the B. And then what you do is you start a trill from seven to 10 on the B string. And then take it to seven and do the same trill on seven and 10 on high E. And then back down the B string into another bend at the 10th fret. So we have this. Now from there, we then go, it goes 10, seven. After that bend on the B, you go 10, seven on the B string into a ninth fret bend on the G and then there, quick little trill between seven and nine on the G, and then you're gonna kind of hold that seventh fret there. So we have this. All right, and next phrase. So that's gonna start at the 17th fret on the high E string. Bend up a whole step and release. Pick it there, down to 14 on the high E string, and then a bend and release to the 17th fret on the B. And then you're gonna bend that up again. 
And when you get to the top, you're going to grab that 17th fret on the high E string. And then a more bend and release here at the 17th on the B. And pull off to 15 and back to the bend. Into another bend of the 17. Release again, pull off, back to 15 again, and then end it with 16, 14 on the G. So we have this. All right, so then we get to verse number one, and it's like a simplified version of what we did earlier. taking us to the pre-chorus. So that's just that F, B minor with the F sharp in the bass. And there, now we can just make it a B sus two. So he doesn't do that, that big change there. It's just the B minor, pick up this um, middle finger to now go to that note's now the second fret there on the B string and then back to the B minor. So we have this. And then the same thing we did before. That G power chord to the G, D power chord back to the G. And then the same thing before, the A. And like I said, you can just make that a sus four chord or they're, they're both there on the recording, but they're overdubbed, so it's kind of whatever one you like the sound of, or do them both. And then back to the B, uh, B minor with F sharp at the bass, back to the A, just repeat. So, very similar to what we did, just kind of stripped down a bit. So now the second time, there's a slight difference. Right here, this B minor. That B minor is held just a little bit longer. And then, at the very end, you hit that A, taking you to the pre-chord. They, they did that just to set up the, the pre-chorus. All right, so we uh, then get to the pre-chorus, which sounds like this. All right, so that's a D major chord to the G. To an A, back to a G, back to an A. Now here, kind of hold it, go to a A sus4, like playing that um, third fret on the B, and then back to the A, regular A major, and then end it with resolving to G. So it's very simple. So we have this D, G, back to G and A, sus. And then we're to the uh, chorus, which is uh, pretty much just like we did at the beginning of the song without that little fill. So it's just kind of straight through. Okay. And then we get to verse number two, which is different. It's not kind of a strum style. It's on heavy just kind of distorted guitars and something like this. And then to the pre-chorus. So that's just kind of that B power chord, the second fret of the A string. One, two, one. So, one, two, one. And then the same thing with the G power chord. That's the open G power chord we did earlier. Same rhythm there, then the same thing on the A power chord. 
and then back to the B power chord. Now here, the kind of the end of the, it goes B, G, A, B. That's the four chord progression. So that it's ending with that B, and we should go hit it twice. And then we go to the A power chord for the ending. So that starts on a, starts on an upbeat there. So it's kind of weird to feel that. So we have this. Down, down. and then you start over. Then back to the same three chords. All right, so from here, we kind of do that chorus a couple of times, and then it's the, the second time, instead of going back to that B minor, it ends with a B major. All right, so that's kind of just the bridge section where uh, Brian May's uh, singing there. So that is going to start um, kind of just with that B. Now, it's kind of, you just kind of pick across. I'm just picking across from the B to G to D string. There's no strict pattern that he's really using. So that's basically just the top half of that B major. So I'm really, when you're first doing that, we're working on just a bunch of triads around through here. So we have bar across the D string, I'm sorry, the fourth fret of the D, G, and the B string. So I'm just picking across that. And then, then we move up to this E major triad. So that's gonna be fifth fret on the B, fourth fret on the G, sixth fret on the D. And then move that up this F sharp major triad. Same thing, same shape up two frets. So we start with the B. E. F sharp. And then we resolve that to the B. So that B triad is the seventh fret on the B, six, uh, I'm sorry, eight on the G, and nine on the D. And then we go basically just bar that same bar we did at the fourth fret here, that at the ninth fret, which makes it a E major triad. Then move it up once again to this F sharp triad, major triad. But that same bar at the eleventh fret, also G, G to B. So we have this. Then he's gonna jump across here and do the B major. So he's just doing a bunch of B major to E major to F major, and kind of different inversions. So we have now the thir seventh fret across the, um, you could go up, you can, you can, if you wanted to, you could just kind of keep going up and, and do the shape up higher up here, but he actually goes down here. So, so you're gonna do that here, the seventh, the, uh, the um, seventh fret on the high E and the B together, the eighth fret on the G. It's kind of a first inversion B major chord. And then to the back to that E major that we did earlier. You kind of you can add the fifth fret, I mean the seventh fret there on the A string. Kind of pick across it and then take it up the up two frets. And then here's where he, there's that little extended ending. Now he goes from this F sharp to up to G. So that chord here at the 10th fret, so 10th fret on the A, and 12th fret across the D, G, the B. And then up to, to the A string, I mean the A power, A major chord, sorry. So all together.
All right, from there, we out of the bridge, we get to this second solo. It's probably the main solo, well, one of the main solos here. We basically have a big solo section here. We have um, this solo, then on the original recording, I think on the original the official video, they admitted this riff, the, the which is really cool, it's my favorite part of the song, so I don't know why they admitted it, but some versions will admit that, but there's basically a solo, then that riff, and then back to another solo. So I'm gonna do the, the solo before that riff first, and then I'll show you the riff. So the, I'm calling this solo number two, so it looks like this. All right, so that right there is gonna start with this first phrase. Sorry. So that kind of starts with an oblique bend. Now, oblique bend means one note stays stationary, the other one moves. So you're gonna have the ninth fret there on the G and the tenth fret on the B. You're gonna pick those together. And you're gonna bend the note on the, the G string up a whole step and keep that note there uh, stationary on the, um, uh, the A note there that's on the B string. Then you have this. So that's gonna be bending the ninth fret on the G over to seventh fret on the B, and then play, play 10 7 on the B. And then over to the 7th fret on the high E string, and back to the 7th fret on the B. And then we're going to go into a bend at the 10th fret on the B string. Play this. So from there we play 10-7 on the B and then go which is a bend and release of the ninth fret on the G. Then play seven, slide down to six on the G, and then pull off seven to six on the G, then nine, seven on the D. So we're all together. Now from there we have this. So that's going to start with a bend, the ninth fret on the B string, slowly bend it up, then roll from the 7th fret on the high E string to 7th on the B, then bend the 10th fret on the B string back to the 7th fret on the high E string. Then we go, so that's a bend at the ninth fret on the G. Then play 9-7, and then 9-7 on the D. From here we have this. So that's 9th fret on the D, 7 on the G, and then go back to the D string, pull off 9 to 7, and back to that 9 there. So we have so. All right, next phrase, we have this. So that's a bend at the 10th fret on the high E string. We'll release that bend, and then roll from the 7th fret on the high E to the 7th fret on the B. Into a bend at the 10th fret on the, on the B string to the 7th fret on the high E string. And then back to that 10th fret bend. And to some bends in the 10th fret on the B. And go then 10, 7, and then on over to the G string now. The kind of bend and release, then 9, pull off to 7. So we have this. And 
And then we have the end of the solo. All right, so that kind of uh, a little bit like that. So we have to some pinch harmonics on those notes. So we had this. You're gonna slide into this 16th fret there on the D, over to 14 on the G, then 16 on the G, then 14 on the D. Here we're gonna do this little legato lick twice. That's pulling off. I'm, do, I'm basically barring across the 14th fret on the B and the high E. I'm gonna pull off 17 to 14 on the high E, and then play 14 on the B string. So do that. That's the like a three note lick done twice. And then, all right, then he ends it here with these bends of the 17, uh, 17 on the B string. You get a little pitch harmonic on there. He uses one of those little coins, so it's probably pretty easy for him. And then pull off to the, the, the 15th fret there on the B. Over to that 16th fret, like a pinch harmonic there at the 16th fret on the G string. All right, here's where that riff comes in. So there's a little riff there, depending on the version of the song you're listening to, I guess. Well, it sounds like this. So that is basically um, playing this. I recommend starting this with an upstroke. It's going to make the string crossing a little bit easier. So we have this. So that's going to start with the second fret on the A string. Remember, start to straight alternate picking after, but just start with an upstroke. So we have this this note, the second fret on the A string hit twice. Open D, to, then to the second fret on the A string again. Then over to the open G string, and then play 4 2 0 on the D. So this. that and then you take that to that G power chord then a D major chord with F sharp in the bass so you gotta grab that second fret there or you can just do a D power chord really up in this top shape you can have a D, D major anyway with that F sharp in the bass so that's the second fret with your thumb and the low E string and then back to the G chord so we have this Again. Now here we have the third solo comes in, overdubs coming in here. Now real quick, over this third solo, we have a little bit different chords. It's kind of, oh, a little bit different. It's kind of the same chords. It's just kind of this, just so the B power chord, the G power chord, to the A, then to the E power chord. So you do that a couple times. The other solo is just to use the same riffs that we've already covered. And then we have kind of the same thing after you've done that twice, except it kind of does a little variation. The B, sorry, to the G, to the A. So this is a third time through this progression. It jumps up here to this. It does uh, this just up at this E major up here at the seventh fret that we did earlier, but you're gonna make it an E sus4 first by adding that 10th fret on the B string. So this is just the rhythm that's going on underneath this third solo that we're getting ready to cover. So, got the, so the third time through this progression, instead of just going down to this E, this, we just do it like this instead. So the, you repeat that progression that I just did twice. So the third time through, Do that little ending up for the E instead, and then back to the chorus. And then it kind of does that. A little, a little harmony line going on up top. It kind of does that three, two, three, two, and then it goes back to it. It's really an A minor set, uh, I'm sorry, a, uh, 
dominant seven chord with the seventh in the bass, so it's a third inversion. So that's going to be the A major chord with this, with this G in the bass. So that's the end of the fourth time of playing that progression. All right, so now let me actually cover the solo real quick, uh, and then I'll show you how to play that one phrase by phrase. So this is solo number three after the heavy riff section. So it looks like this. So that right there is going to start with this little. So that's pulling off 15 to 14 on the B string and then 16, 14 on the G. So we just. Uh, you can pick that if you want to do up on the B, down on the G, or do down strokes on both. It doesn't really matter. Into a bend, a slow bend of the 17th fret on the B string. Then, so that right there is going to be a, that oblique bend again that we did earlier. Now I will say this part right here. There's times where you see like in the video or like live. I tell them, you'll see him like kind of start this lick here, and then then ended up here and to me it, it's probably from the sound of it just the sound of the string it sounds like it sounds like he's on the kind of the wound strings down here the bass strings not um so um i'm gonna go with that version uh so anyway we have this so that oblique bend here that we did earlier holding that 10th fret and bending that ninth fret on the g release Pull off the seven, over to nine on the D. And then we had that little lick I was talking about. So that's just kind of starting at the ninth fret, sliding down to seven on the A. Pull off to the five, then pick seven again, go back up to the nine. And then the hammer. 7 to 9 on the G, over to 7 on the, I'm sorry, 9 on the D, 7 to 9 on the D, and then over to 7 on the G, a couple of bends on the 9, pull off the 7, and then resolve it down to that 9 on the D. So it's kind of this, you can when you slide up, you go to that 7 on the D, and then back down to that 9, then go with the hammer. Just those notes. Then it goes into some bends at the 15th fret on the B. Now this section right here, you can't really see him recreate exactly. You can do the pull-offs here. But he's kind of a kind of a the, the pull-off, the first pull-offs you hear. Are those notes, but that's kind of a big jump. And then go into that consistent pattern that he did. He did here, but down an octave. So what I did instead is I kind of met him in the middle on his way down. So so that gives plenty of time to do the shifting. So we had this bends at the 15th fret. And then come down to the seventh fret here, and you're gonna pull off seven to six to five, then over to the uh, seventh fret on the G, then the open B, and that gives you more time to shift down to get to that legato lick. So I just and then so that's the same lick we did here, but down 12 frets. So pulling off three to two, and then pulling off four to two. 
So then it's into a bend at the fifth fret there on the B. And then. And then it's kind of one of those kind of licks of how, how Brian May likes to do a lot of his descending licks. So. It's kind of really kind of trolling between notes. So we have just. This, this, let's get the scale notes down first, and then it's easy to just kind of do what you want. So the notes are going to be this um, fifth fret on the B to third to two. And then we go down four two on the G, four two on the D, and then open D, and then two um, zero. A. So what you're gonna do is you start, you kind of start it as a three note pattern, just so you're just kind of starting with play the top note and go three notes down from that note, and now play the next note from the top note in the scale and play three notes down from that, and then do the same process again. This is this is a sequence, so you're taking same pattern just moving it to different parts of the scale so uh, that's what you'll, you'll hear is called a sequence so we're just taking that a three note sequence through the scale in the beginning so five three two and then three two over to four on the G and then three notes down from the next note in the scale would, so so that's two on the B and then four two on the G and then from there He's kind of more doing trill stuff. He'll. So it's kind of just you just trill between four and two, and then and then he'll go over to the four and the D, and then come back, and then the same thing uh, between two and four, and then trill in between zero and two and the D, and zero and two and the A, and it resolves it there at the fourth fret there on the G. So when you get to the. And you get those two notes. You can just kind of trill if you want. So I hope you understand what's going on there. And then we get to this part. So that's kind of just kind of. So it's that bend at the 15th fret of the B, release, and then up to the 17th fret, release, pull off to 15, over to 16 on the G. And then into some more bends at the 17th fret. Resolve them down to the 15, over to 16 on the G. And then we have this, is, which kind of takes us to the end of the solo. A little har harmonized section at the end, I'm just going to be doing the high harmony part, so it looks like this. A patented uh, Brian May harmony section there, so I can't obviously do all of those. So we're just going to do the high one. So we have um, from there we have some unison bends. So that's um, you know tenth fret of there on the high E string, and then you're going to be bending up the thirteenth fret to match it on the B. You can do it at the 14th fret if you want, but most typically I think he's doing it from the 13th fret and being up. And then he moves that up two frets, just does a couple times there at the 12th fret, so you're bending the 15th on the B. And then it goes into this little descending legato. So that's it into a bend and release of the 17 on the B string. And then you're gonna pull off um, 15 to 14 twice on the on the beat, and then, and then it's kind of the same thing we did here. You can just pull off 17, 16 to 14 on the G and the D, and then the A. So we just, and then we get that last. So I just okay, you might. You might want to repeat that 
1614 on the G a couple times. Basically, you want to get down to this note, though. It doesn't. However, way you want to do it, straight down. Play that twice, and then straight down to that note, and then. And that's the high harmony line. There's also another one in there, but we have this at the 17th fret, and then without the bend, and then pick it with the bend again. And then without the bend, and then up to the 19th fret, the bend. All right, and then that takes us to the pre chorus thing. And then we get to the chorus that actually here we actually have the a cappella chorus. So one time through the chorus there, um, played without anything, any instruments, except for at the very end it hits that A, hits that A power chord, and then it starts the same. So you're not gonna play any chords over the first time through that over the a cappella chorus till the very end of it. But you hit that A power chord. Then you play the normal chorus progression, and then we have the outro solo, um, which is another little quick one, and it sounds like this. All right, so we're gonna start here with this. So that's gonna start at the, the bend of the ninth, ninth fret. This is the fourth, the outro solo here. Solo number four. So we have a, a bend at the ninth fret on the G. And then you're gonna play seven on the B string. Hammer 10, pull back off to seven. into a bend at the 10th fret there on the B. All right, from there. So we had this. Ten, nine, seven on the high E. Over to 10 on the B, back to the seven on the high E. And then a bend and release of the ninth fret on the G. And we have this. Which is nine, I'm sorry, seven on the G, nine, seven, six, then nine, seven on the D, down to five, back to seven. So we Then up to the 17th fret here for this inning. So there's some bends at the 17th fret on the B, and then you do the bend, grab that 17 on the high E, kind of an oblique thing, and then to another bend, you just kind of hold it. I want it, I want it. And then there's that little fill that happens at the very end of the song. Now, so that's gonna start with the, the bend at the 17th fret there on the high E. And then play, play 17, 14 and on the high E. And then a quick bend and release there at the ninth, I'm sorry, the 17th fret on the B string. And then from there, we had the same notes kind of that we did earlier. Uh, let me just cover the notes real quick. We have 15, 14 on the B. 16, 14 on the G, 16, 14 on the D, and then it does go down to the 12th fret here. There's a little fill lick at the very end here. So, but between those, he's kind of just doing a series of really trills. So you can kind of take this lick like, 
kind of similar to what he does, like with this kind of legato stuff, he's just kind of winging it. So you can do it like this. The, the 15, do they do a kind of hammer from 14 to 15? Pull back off to 14. Over to 16 on the G string, and then back to that 14. And then kind of the same thing now as you go down. So between those notes. And when you get down to the D string, play 16, 14, slide down to 12, then go over to 14 on the A, roll to 14 on the D, then back to that 14 on the A, and then 12 on the D. And that's the end of the track. So here it is. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this really in-depth breakdown uh, of um, I Want It All. It's been requested for a while, but you know, because of the in-depth, <laughs> you know, getting all the solo work down and, and everything, there's a lot of layers, even with the rhythm guitar parts and trying to make sense of those. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.